ministry in Pretoria. I've been ministering in um, Johannesburg. I think, I don't know, the Expo Center also. Yeah, I've been ministering there. And he said, I cannot, I cannot come to this city and not be with my covenant brother. Otherwise, the Holy Spirit will deal with him. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> And so I'm so excited. We haven't seen for years. And he is here in the house. So I want you to welcome the man of God, the prophet of God, Delvan, Chris Delvan Guamna. Hallelujah. Yeah. I know you, you are not like Nigeria. In my church, we come to church until Shiloh comes before we close. So, but I know you guys have time constraints, so please be seated. <laughs> Thank you. I love your worship team. I've enjoyed myself just listening to them. It's been a long time since I saw my brother Eric and his lovely wife, Uba. And... Um, he smuggled her out of Nigeria and then he has refused to feed her look at how she's looking <laughs> so after after service I'm going to smuggle her away so we take care of her <laughs> I, I love them so dearly we first met in the Gambia although we all come from the north of Nigeria but we have a mutual brother Soska Forbes and he was there I followed him to every tabernacle this is the third one I met him in Gambia met him at a tabernacle in Lagos and then we're here now and it's exciting one of the greatest assets you can ever have is relationships and we you know we talk a lot of um, um, Jewish Aramaic Greek grammar and we call things like kingdom and all of that. And kingdom is not a teaching that you receive and write in your exercise book. Kingdom is actually real life, relating with people. I mean, if someone meets you today, can they know that in a month's time, you still remember them? You know, ministry is not a professional thing. It's not always about going to minister and get an offering. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I know people in Johannesburg. But I mean, I met Eric and his wife and children when the family was still tender. And the apostle, um, Ayedogbong, is a very close friend and colleague that we work together with. But, I mean, to come into Joburg, I just wanted to see three people. I have a sister called Pearl Kupe. And when she heard, I called her from the airport and she started insulting me, you know. She said, Mvulim Luomo, like you. You know, she calls me all kinds of uh, Zulu names and insults me in South African. But it's because we are close. We are very close. She said, how can you call me when you're in Nairobi? I said, well, I just came in and they told me South African visas are like gold. And so they told me, your visa just came out, so I had to pass. But then in my heart, I thought, ah, it's a good time to see Eric and to see Uba and see whichever of the children is still at home. Because, you know, children grow very fast. But it's my pleasure to make an acquaintance with you and to see you face to face and to see the work that my brother is uh, supervising over. I met some of your girls that came to Lagos with you, but I don't remember anybody now. They've grown older, they've married maybe, and yeah, but I don't, yeah, but I'm sure afterwards we'll re-make uh, acquaintances. But there is a God who rules in Zion. Yahweh is his name. He sits amidst the cherubims of glory and his every word rules supreme. 
suspending every natural law. I said, there is a God who rules in Zion, and Yahweh is his name. You see, he sits in the midst of cher the cherubims of glory, and his every word rules supreme, suspending every natural law. But this Yahweh is for us. I said, this Yahweh is for us. And from the rising of the sun unto its going down, nothing will change this fact. That Yahweh is for you. And Yahweh is for me. Although the people in the world deny the truth that we know, yes, this Yahweh remains for us. You see, we're not confused about the Father's intentions. We see the blood of Jesus. If he couldn't hold back his only begotten son, yes, then Yahweh is for us. I said, we're not confused about the Father's intentions. We see the blood of Jesus. If he couldn't hold back his only begotten son, I tell you now that Yahweh is for us. So Yahweh is for us. Yahweh is for us. And from the rising of the sun unto its going down, from the sands of the desert to the southern sea, Yahweh is given to us. This Yahweh is for you, and Yahweh is for us. And from the rising of the sun unto its going down, nothing will change this fact. So rise up, O daughter of Zion. Shake off the dust from your garments. Put on all your ornaments now. See your king in glory is come. Let the weak say I am strong. And let the feeble strengthen themselves. Although the people in the world refuse to know the truth we do, yeah. This Yahweh remains for us. Yahweh remains for us. And it's from the rising of the sun unto its going down. It's from the rising of the sun unto its going down. I say, from the rising of the sun unto its going down. Yahweh remains for us. When you are rejected, when systems don't work for you, it doesn't change the fact. He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he that promised is faithful, and he that promised is true. He's not a man that he should lie. And he's not the son of man that he should change his mind. He's not like us. I'm coming. Oh, I changed my mind. I'm not coming. No. I said, we're not confused about the father's intentions towards us. Because we see the blood of Jesus on the mercy seat. And if he couldn't hold back his only begotten son, then Yahweh is for us. Hallelujah. 
Alléluia Alléluia Blessed be the name of the Lord You know, if you need a man to pray your heart, here's my heart, oh Lord. If you need a voice to sing your song, let me be the one. If you need a heart where you can hide your word, yes, my heart, oh Lord. If you need a voice, I will stand for you in my time. Let me be the one. If the world forsakes you and I'm the last man standing, so be it, Lord. I'll still walk with you. Yes, Lord. When all is said and done, at the setting of the sun, Lord, I'll still ride with you. still walk with you the tide is rising higher and higher still I want to sail with you when all is said and done at the setting of the sun Lord let me walk with you. The world forsakes you, and I'm the last man standing. Hear my heart today, I'll still walk with you. Is there someone this morning that didn't come into church properly? Because you forgot to make commitments before coming. The house of God and his presence is not where you just march into. It's where you get ready for. And how do you get ready for his presence? It's like the sun does every day. The Bible says that the sun rises every morning ready to run his race like a bridegroom not like a husband like a bridegroom preparing to meet his bride you know there's difference from a bridegroom being a bridegroom and being a husband isn't it I don't like being a husband much but I love being a bridegroom in fact we have planned to remarry me and my wife many times because you know a bridegroom 
There are no encumbrances. They've not yet had children. No medical issues. No stresses. Oh, honey, I just bashed the car. Oh, something, you know. They're not paying bills. On that day, you are going to meet your bride. You're just thinking, and we'll live happily ever after. So that day, the bridegroom is struggling to put his buttons quickly, get a bow tie on, put on a cummerbund, and put maybe a pocket square. And his friend and him are impeccable. They have never looked this fine. The bridegroom, that's the day he looks the finest. And the bride, oh my goodness. How many times have I been in church and I girls that I normally knew that I would say, you are not fine. I don't know why, you know? And then on the day of their wedding, I say, who is this? <laughs> because they've been made up. You know, recently, one of my daughters, her father, his wife died, so he remarried, and I happened to go and grace the occasion. And then I got there, and these were all my PAs, Eric, from my office, the girls, there were about eight of them. They serve in the office, uh, some during service days and some work permanently there. And when I got there, I met a lady and she was saying to me, welcome daddy. Um, ah, we're so happy. My father said they should bring you to the front. And I was thinking, oh, thank you, ma. And then she said to me, no, daddy, this is rejoice. I said, no, it can't be you. <laughs> How come I don't know my secretary? <laughs> she was so made up. All her skin, the Bantu color had been washed over. And, and they, put, they, they put terracotta on her. And then I saw another one. And she knelt down from afar. And I said, I recognize the kneeling down. But I don't know the person. And she said, Daddy, it's dummy. I said, no, bring back my girls. They had false eyelashes. They had made their nails. They were all looking. Now, that's what being a bride is. And that's what being a groom is. You know, when you have already married, you are tired from the first child, tired from the second child. I was, they were dedicating children today and I was looking at these people and imagine what they will look like in 10 years time because of the cost of bearing the children. You know, as the children grow younger, you grow older. They are growing younger at your expense. Rippling muscles at the expense, expense of your own flabby muscles. You are no more looking sharp. You know, when I married my wife, I had all kinds of names for her. Sweetheart, darling, honey, baby. And you'd see her, you know, 40-year-old woman, excited because you are calling her baby. She knows she's not a baby, but I mean... <laughs> Some of you should try calling your wife baby again today, you know? Because you haven't called them like that for a long time. But recently I found a better name for her. I call her Dearest. And I'll tell you why. Because she's the most expensive thing in my life. She's dear. Very expensive. Where are you? Sorry, ma. I am here. And so what? She's so expensive. Everything I do, I have to consider her 10,000 times. Are you following me? So when I look at how much we have paid, how many bridges we have crossed, how many rivers, I know I can't call her honey again. I just call her dear. <laughs> so when I say dear, I remind myself, man, in all the things I have bought in my life, nothing has cost me as much as this dearest. Everything she says, she's correct. The only thing is I will go and do what I want to do. Because I've grown stubborn over the years. You know the fear of your wife is the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> the 
guys, you guys can sit down. I, I really love you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. Is, is that not true? There are, and you know why? You see, 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 your wife is the only one that she has the same name like God. You know, they say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the same thing now, the fear of your wife is the beginning of wisdom. What did they call The Bible calls a wife a helpmate, meet for you. The only person called helper in the Bible is the Holy Spirit. So your wife and the Holy Spirit are, they are friends. See, 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 see. Did you see these women leapers? They found their way into your church too. One day, my women were having problems with their husbands. So I called them for a meeting. I said, listen, let me tell you something. You are the only one that can speak into the bone marrow of your husband. Don't mind the way he looks. Macho, you know, yeah, who is, uh, can I have a cup of coffee, please? Yeah. No. It's just fabu. In Nigeria, fabu means fabrication. When you see a man looking like this and rippling muscles, carrying 250 kg weights and all of that, yeah, it's the way God made him to look. But he's not like that inside. He loves you. You are the only one. If you say to him, I am dying, he will drop everything. Believe me. Even if he tries to, uh, uh, yeah, okay, well, things are all right. No, he doesn't mean it. What he's saying is I need help inside. He's only trying to put up a front. And so women mistake it. When they see a guy walk into the house bouncing, yeah, baby, how are you? Yeah, honey, come on. They, they, they think he's too proud. Let me bring him down to his level. Then they arrange a word. And they fire. <laughs> and then the man. You know, you know why David killed Goliath? Because David and Goliath, I mean Goliath's wife, they were the same height. <laughs> so when Goliath saw David, he thought, honey, have you joined my enemies? <laughs> because Goliath, you know, small women like to marry giants. And then when you hear them in their house, she will be warning him in the kitchen, Goli? Goli? <laughs> and instead of, instead of him fighting, you will not hear him, uh, yeah, baby, that's not what I meant now. Uh, the wife is a small woman controlling this big man. So God has a sense of humor. He sent Gold David. And Goliath had to ask David, and ask Saul, am I a dog that you people send me? But he was not sure his wife has not changed and wore Israeli uniform. <laughs> he was still trying to find out when the stone hit him. Yeah, that's just a joke. You know. It's supposed to make you enjoy the word of God. So when you see your husband, your greatest gift and you assume he, he ignores me. He's not ignoring you. What you said is in his bone marrow. Then a woman uses the weapon, the only weapon she has, which is her tongue. She sends out a word. And before you know it, the man is a wreck. And you go back and still expect him to be strong. But he cannot be. The Bible calls a woman a standby. The word helper, paracletus, the name for the Holy Spirit, is the word for standby or reservoir. It means when I fill up the tank and I ride from Joburg to Pretoria and ride, ride towards the Cape and I run out of fuel, I go to the gas station. That's the main res reservoir to refresh which means you have more than me 
That's why when my tank is dry, I come to you for refills. Actually, nobody can ever be rich and escape poverty until they find their own wife. No matter what promises God gives you, there are it's not possible for you to even get close to it till you find your own wife. He doesn't say men love all women. I didn't say women submit to all men. He said love your own wife. Submit to your own husband and always as unto the Lord. We're building, we're constructing together. We're working together. And we will make it if we can only agree to work together. He tells the husbands, be careful. Don't hinder your prayers. Don't stop the angel's ability to bring your results because of the way you treat your wives. Then he tells the wives, you to be careful. Don't submit to your husband and then try to uh, usurp the submission again. What's the point? Do you love me? Come. Say yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. So when you say yes, I do, the Bible says husbands, love your wives. Oh honey, how are you? I'm fine in your honey. <laughs> you're acting, you're acting, you're acting like my girlfriend, not my wife. I said, I said, honey, so you're supposed to act like my wife. Why are you shy? <laughs> she's already my wife. We're acting drama, but she's acting like a girl I was toasting. The Bible says husbands love your wife. As the Lord loved the church and gave himself for her. Then he said to women, wives, submit to your husbands as unto the Lord again. And then women libers who just want to, you know, everything that Jesus is, man, fallen man by nature, wants to distort it. Oh yeah, why will God just tell He just told the man that he should love the wife and then it is the wife is telling that we should submit. They just hate the word submit. They forget the language of God. I was listening to the worshippers worshipping. It's the same God. I heard worship teams in Nigeria. Just in a week, I've been in like six countries. In America, it's the same. In Rome, it's the same. In Paris, it's the same. In Nigeria, it's the same. In South Africa, the same. You don't have to go to a universal theological training center to fit into churches. Every church you enter, you can tell whether the signature is there, the Holy Spirit. If he's not there, you can tell. Someone said to me, oh, some pastor said people should eat grass. I said, you must be a donkey. How do you call such a person a pastor? I mean, where have you seen pastors asking people to eat grass? Say, so if you go to a shrine and they say you should eat grass, you now come out and say he's a pastor because he said in Jesus' name. So what? Okay, I came to you. Um, I, I give me a thousand rand in Pastor Eric's name. Will you give me? But you have never met me before. No, do you understand me? If you've never met me, would you? If you were the facility keeper of this place and I came and I told you that Pastor Eric said we can use this facility for a meeting. He didn't call you. You will need verification. So you walk into a place and somebody says, in Jesus' name, I love you. And you say, that all these pastor, they are very funny. That's how they call pastors in Ghana. Say, pastor. So I asked them, then what is spaghetti? If you call a pastor, pasta, what will you call spaghetti? 
say, he's not a pastor. I say, don't you know Jesus? Don't you know Jesus? He's the prototype. I got into your house and you know I heaved a sigh of relief. And he said, thank God. In South Africa, there are still places where sheep can go and find grass. Nurture and pasture. There was a time all my message was about the things that were wrong with church. Then one day the Lord asked me, but is that a church? So I said to myself, no, that's not a church. Because the person there is a babalawo, is a marabout. What do you call a sangoma? So a sangoma can wear suit and tie. Doesn't change anything. He can even sing choruses. Amen, amen, amen. If you have the spirit of God, you will know. A monkey and a goat, they are not the same. And the real problem, anyway, let me explain this submission. So when the Bible says, husbands, love your wives. Did you see the way she's holding her body like iron? Because I'm not her husband. We are acting drama. No, listen, we are acting drama. But if you can look, if you look at her body language, you will know she wants to act, but she's careful. Because what will mommy and daddy say after service? What will my wife say when she sees this video? What will, do you understand what I'm saying? And then she too, I don't even know her commitment. How will she explain it? But that exactly is the meaning of that word. Jesus said, husbands, love your wives, which means draw her closer. If she was really my wife, she will enter into me. Isn't it? When I hold her, there will be no fear, no holds barred. It's my husband. When you see my, my. So when he said, wives submit, Uba, what did he mean? He meant husbands love your wives and wives respond to the love. It's not abuse. He's not abusing you. He doesn't treat women like they're inferior. He means respond. Then you say, how can I respond when he's offending me? You married a monkey. You have to marry your kind. It's true. You cannot marry, monkey cannot marry gorilla and then they will live together. They are all primates. But gorilla is different. If he slaps a monkey, the monkey has gone to eternity. <laughs> Do you understand me? Let us stop struggling. Let's get the fundamentals right. What kind of places were you surfing for a wife or surfing for a husband? That is what is causing you problem. You want a husband, but you want his chest to be big as a signboard. You want his voice to be like baritone. Hey, baby. Yeah, you'll find those on the streets, but that's where you'll find thugs. Then you come home and you say, I don't know who I'm married to. No, you chose what you wanted. You two, you are looking for a girl and you are thinking of figure eight. You are describing, it's just body you are looking for. Now the question is, when you marry, you marry the container. But what is going to give you trouble at home? The content. <laughs> so they are busy asking you, what kind of girl do you want? She must be slim. She must know how to walk like Naomi Campbell. She must, you, you understand what I'm saying? You, know, you are talking of the container. But what you are going to live with is the content. It is the content that will shoot you with a poisoned dart that will weaken you completely until you get up and you say, I even curse God. People have cursed God. And within one day, you are in six or seven different hands saying I love you to six or seven different other women. And you don't even remember your consecrations to the Lord. We make it difficult for us to build the easiest things that God has given us to build. No man, 
No man has any business being poor when he has found his own wife. Now, don't go and say, yeah, it's because you have rejected me. No, you might not even be his own wife. Because for you to be his own wife, you have to be submitted to Christ. You don't submit to a man, you submit to the Lord. Then the submission you gave the Lord is what you transfer to him as a son of God. So if you yourself is not submitted to the Lord, you cannot submit to a man. If you yourself have never bowed the knee and said, Lord, I love you more than every... Did you hear that? It's greater than the greatest, higher than the highest, bigger than the biggest, sweeter than the sweetest. You are describing him. If you describe him and you know him that well, that's how you are going to find him and identify him in the life of the person you are choosing. What are his names? I love listening. I mean, they were just singing, Jesus, Jesus, Tobe Chuku. It, 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 there are names of God. And all of his names, they describe his attributes. So if I know him as the biggest, the greatest, the tallest, the sweetest, then I'll be looking for him in you before I say I love you. If I don't find him in you, I will leave you. The Bible says, do not be yoked with unbelievers. Give me your hand, Yuba. And their unbelief. No, I cannot say to her, I want to marry you. She's married already. So anything we say to each other, even if she says, me too, I love you like die, that is unbelief. And if you're unequally yoked with an unbeliever, she's an unbeliever now, not because she's not a Christian. She calls herself Christian, but the agreements we are forging are agreements that are on unbelief. No, do you understand that? His name is Jehovah Nissi. He covers me, my banner. He told them by the river, when the water was bitter, break that branch, throw it inside. It's what I will do in the future, but let me do it a type for you now. Because my name is the Lord that he lets thee, Jehovah Rapha. He told Abraham, walk before me always, be blameless. I will guarantee for you a sure heritage as long as you live, even long after you are gone. Your children will enjoy my promises. My name is El Shaddai, the Almighty. When you face mountains, just remember, I am El Shaddai. I'm bigger than the mountains. Stand up, young man, on your chair, please. Let's act. Just climb your chair. Stand on it. Yes. Don't break it, though, because I know... <laughs> You only look small. Sometimes small things are heavy. Now when, you, when the psalmist was running for help, he saw a mountain taller than him. He says, I'll lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. Then he realized, no, his help will not come because there's someone bigger than the mountains. He says, my help cometh from the Lord. Who made heaven? Is the mountains part of the creation of God? So he said, I won't worship the creation. I will go look for the creator. Oh my God. Sit down, sir. Thank you. Your help cannot come from a mountain. It will come from who? The Lord. The maker of mountains, valleys, oceans, rivers, lakes. That's why he leaves the injunction for church members to make it easy for your pastors to pastor you. Your pastor doesn't need to say we need funds. It's an insult. So what are you doing in the house? Sometimes pastors have to go and import pastors who are professionals at fundraising <laughs> to make you give. Why? And then we sit and get angry that, oh, our churches have been invaded by idiots. We permitted it. What kind of wife are you if you don't wake up and your first consumption is what will my husband and children eat? It's your business. 
Your husband doesn't have to be kind for you to do that. It's your responsibility. You signed for it. The Bible doesn't say husbands love your wives because uh, they did something nice. No. Even when you are angry, love her. You get up, you go to her, you say, sweetheart, I'm really sorry. One day my friend went to say to his wife, I'm really sorry. The wife said, no, you shouldn't be saying sorry. I'm the one that should say sorry. I was the one that started it. That's the way it's supposed to be. Because you carry the same spirit, she carries the same spirit. We should be able to call ourselves to uh, uh, judgment, you know. I don't need the devil coming to accuse me of anything. Immediately they said to David, one man killed somebody's goat and ate it. And he has many goats. David said, kill the man. The prophet said, don't even pass judgment yet. You are the person. I only told you a story so that I can escape. I'm sure that man, that prophet was a Nigerian. <laughs> because Nigerians are very smart people. It was a Nigerian that went to arrest Elijah. The first set that came, man of God. The king said, you should come down with us or... Elijah said... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. He said, or oh, what? The man said, you don't want to see. Then Elijah said, if I be a man of God, then let the seal of my office fall on you. 51 people were roasted. Then they now sent South Africans, Zulu. And they were singing from a fowl. <laughs> you know, they wanted to tell Elijah that look, oh, those ones that you saw, those are just uh, Kenyans, so oh. those are Kikuyu. This is the real Zulu. And then they came, they danced. <laughs> then the, the commander shouted, Elijah, man of God. I'm the great grandson of Zulu, uh, Shaka. Yeah. Uh, leave that throne, uh, that stone, and come down now, or you will see something. <laughs> ha. See the dead bodies of the other people fried there. Because he was telling me, I'm Zulu, we talk with the dead people. We are not afraid of death. <laughs> and Elijah said, If I be a man of God, what happened to them? This happened to you. Then they sent a Nigerian. So I know he's a Nigerian and he must be a Yoruba man. <laughs> because the wisdom that he displayed there is not normal. He brought the soldiers left, right, left, right, left, right. Attention! Present arms. Drop your arms and step back three steps away. They dropped their arms, they stepped back. <laughs> then the man came and said, Man of God. We know that the king cannot get you. If he could, Shebi would have come himself. That's why he sent us. And you know that the king is wicked. We too, we know. But we are working. We can't call him wicked. Now, look at brother Eric. He's a sergeant. His daughter is about to get married. If he dies today, what will I tell his wife? Please, I beg you. We don't have power to capture you. And we cannot go and tell the king that we won't obey our instructions. Just save our lives. The Lord said, go with this one. And Elijah stood up and said, let's go. And the man told the guys, eh, carry your arms. <laughs> so they carried the arms to protect Elijah. Sir, why do you come to church and have fun? You come to construct. So this analogy I gave you of husband and wife, it's true to everything you do. So if you are a member of church, come sir. Then you take your pastor's hand and walk. You are the one who will stop and say, Ah, pastor, we've walked some distance. Do you like a drink to refresh? Pastor doesn't have to ask you. Jesus is the pastor. 
Not Eric. How dare you get up from home? It is when they say it's offering time, then you are rummaging in your pocket and you took, took you see, 100 rand, you say no. 20 rand, you say no. Some people even have sensors on their fingers. When they put their hand, they know the denomination. <laughs> How dare you? Thank you, sir. Do you understand me? How dare you treat Jesus like that? Because you are seeing the man, not the God. They call him the son of man. That was just his name. But how many of you want a God who does not know anything that happens to men? He has never felt hunger has never been tempted with lust like you. Don't you prefer a God who has been through it? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because he is with me. His experience equips him to be my best guide. When we want to bury a Christian, we go there and we stand at the grave. We actually dedicate the grave first. We speak to the grave. It's in the, I mean, anthology for pastors, you know. You tell the grave, we are not afraid of you. We are not afraid I was at Eric's mother's burial. We are not afraid of you. Jesus laid here. So we are, we are excited to lay our sister, our brother's body here. Because the way Jesus rose up, that's how we will reap we say it. I can't follow Muhammad. He doesn't know any way. He himself told his daughter, I don't know where I'm going to. I can give you the treasures of Turkey. I can give you jewels from India. I can give you this. I can give you that. But I can't give you the afterlife. Not a promise. But Jesus is the longest running promise. The farthest reaching prophecy. When Jesus makes promises, I look at him and I ask him, you are either a genius or a fool. Because how can you promise that? And you see that chapter we read in Isaiah 8. For the children's dedication. I am my children that you have given, you have given me there for signs and wonders. It was there Jesus said, compare me, which other God can compare themselves with me? Can they say something that has not yet happened and bring it to pass? One day I tried it. It was 1991. I said to the devil, I said, come, come here. I was praying. So I had fellowship with Jesus. Now I wanted to talk to the devil. Because they are members of my company. Jesus is the CEO. The devil, I gave him ex-officio member. He's a board member. Because whether you invite him or not, he's following. <laughs> so when we do meetings, I tell Jesus, sit here. You devil, sit here. Mm -hmm. Then I ask Jesus, let's talk. So as I'm talking with him, he's speaking his word to me, right? Yes. But where, how do you know if the word of God is true? You now face your enemy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. The Bible calls his wisdom, the wisdom that comes to naught. Naught is zero. Yeah. When we were doing arithmetic as little children, we used to call zero naught. Street language. So I don't call Satan, Satan. I call him what? Uh, when I get up, I say, not, come here. <laughs> then I tell him, I say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to Port Harcourt to go and minister. Because I'm poor, I don't have money to fly, I will take a night bus. We will pass through here and there and there and there and there. I should arrive Port Harcourt around 5 a.m. If you are the devil, stop me. Because Jesus said to me, I will never leave you. 
Oh, no, 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 no. You didn't hear that promise. He didn't say, I will try my best to be with you. That's not what he said. He said, we'll do, he didn't say, we will do all we can. Now, when he says that now, you remember that Pastor Eric said he will do all he can, but there was bad traffic, so he couldn't make it. Do you get what I'm saying? No, that's, that's not Jesus. He saw the intervening possibilities. And he has made a promise that overrides anything that hell can manufacture. Jesus Christ. So when he makes, that's why I got born again. I'm, I don't, I'm a businessman in my mind. Christians met me and they'll tell me, stop smoking cigarette, stop smoking all the things you are smoking. And I said, why? They said, because it's no good. I said, who said? I like it. My problem is not to stop smoking. My problem is, what will you give me in return? Because some of us don't know the gospel. The gospel is not morality. Stop telling people, see the way you are dressing. See the way, you... look, the person is in prison. He is helpless. If he could help himself, will he be doing it? Sometimes I would be drunk, Erico, and I would lie down on the bed and open my hands like this. Because I hate the smell of tobacco when I'm drunk. Who smoked? Me. Who drank? Me. Who hates the smell of tobacco? Me. So I lie down like Jesus on the cross. I'm telling you. Because the moment my fingers come near me, I want to throw up. So don't come and tell me drinking is bad. I should stop it. That's not the gospel. Everybody has told me, even me, I've told myself. I used to play basketball. My dream was to go to America. I'm a very lazy person. I don't want to school. I don't want to get master's PhD. For what? You'll be reading for years. I just want a shortcut. If I get a contract for basketball, they pay me the first two million dollars. Sir, me and my family are made forever. <laughs> David came here, this Goliath was shouting, so. So, send me a man. If he defeats me, we will serve him. Isn't that so, my people? And they, yeah. <laughs> but if we defeat him, you will serve us. And David came. What will be given to the man who kills this idiot? Because he understood that as big as he is, he has no covenant with the living God. The boss you are upset about, the person that you are upset about, if he doesn't have a covenant with the living God, is a snowflake. Yeah. And what David wanted, he was a businessman. What will you guys give me? Then they said, ah, you will move into the house next to Pastor Eric's house, free of charge. He said, one. <laughs> Number two, in the budget of the church, yes. the food you eat in that house and the drinks and all, everything you need is going to be part of the budget. Two, they will give you an official car with a driver. Three, David was counting the things. He's a businessman, he's a transaction. Don't take my cigarette if you don't have anything to put in my finger. Because smokers, when they are restless, they light a cigarette. So it's a form of comfort. Are you following me? It's like a walking stick. So don't take away my walking stick. Give me something in return. Jesus, the word of God is full of promises. And the promises are tied to his names. Listen, one of his names is the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. It's his name. If you go today to pray, don't say Jesus. Get inside your room and lock your door. And said, okay. Pastor came to church today and said, your name is the God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. And I've seen it in the scripture. Now, you, my God, light, I mean, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness? Come and let's have a talk. What does that word mean? Listen, he didn't say the light to shine into the darkness. If I hold a torchlight that can go a thousand meters, it would only shine as far as a thousand meters. After that, the light will fail. 
but he commands light to shine out of the... Can, can you imagine that power? He says, even till today, the darkness does not understand. The darkness is trying to be darkness, but it is producing light. Antithetical to it. Hear what the Bible said. Eric, tell me I hate you, Divi. Say it. Uba, tell me I love you, Divi. Now both of you stand up and hold hands. Yoke your hands like you are getting married. <laughs> then both of you come and give me, act like you are giving me diamonds. I mean, this is the one that hates me and the one that loves me. How did they unite and they are blessing me? God said, I will make all things work together for your good. Sit down, sir. No, 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 no. Do, do you get that? One is saying, I hate you. The other one is saying, I love you. And then, but they are finding themselves working together for my good in spite of the way they feel. Those are preposterous promises. And when I sit with Jesus, it's personal. So you are telling him, my school fees, my this, my that, my that. And then you see his name, the one who commands the light to shine out. You are saying, I don't know what to do. That's when you need him. Mary and Martha said, our brother is already dead. If you had come, he would still be alive. Jesus said, no, if I had come, I would meet a sick man and I will heal him. But today I am come like the resurrection and the life. And what you have is a dead body. I am the best solution. Oh, you didn't get that. If it's a sick man, you need a medical doctor with a stethoscope. Come and take a pulse. Come and take a pressure reading. But if it's a dead man, you need the resurrection and the life. So he said it, I am the resurrection and the life. If any man believes in me, even if he were dead, yet shall he live. And you know, again, sadly, they are Nigerian girls. They said to Jesus, we know. But they didn't know. We know. That's why we said if you had come earlier. That's Nigerians for you. You're advising a Nigerian. Don't go. You will die. You say, I know what I'm doing. I know, I know. I know. Just take it easy. I know. Is it when you are in the grave? Even in the grave, you hear Nigerian dead bodies telling the people, I know. I know. <laughs> and then Jesus said, roll the stone away. It's your unbelief. It's your confusion. Lazarus, come forth. Now, this is how God surprises us. I mean, if I want, I can write Pastor Eric and then we'll set up a program and then they have to put my picture on a poster. <laughs> Reverend Courageous Delvan, the apostle of glory from Nigeria, so that we can have a program. But excuse me, please. He is the bread of life. What is wrong with you coming to church and finding a surprise? What is church if there are no surprises? Is it not a surprise for you that I'm in church? I called the host of the program and I said to them, can I go to my friend? I need to see his wife and see the church. And they said, ah, pastor, by all means, we thought you wouldn't even be able to get up in the morning and want to go out. So you, you would be resting. I said, no, no, no. And then my son, Pastor Sule, who, who's been helping me, he said, Daddy, I would also like to go to church. I said, okay, let's go. And we are here, happening to you like rain. And there is no program, no arrangement. Your protocol don't have to fuzz. Nobody, in fact, your protocol saw me and he held a big signboard and said, is it your first time here? <laughs> And I said, I said in my heart, she doesn't know that this is the senior, senior pastor. <laughs> Until I get in. Eric has been abusing me from the 
please, he picked me to hear. I said to him, when I take the microphone, he has forgotten. He had a church in Lagos, he was pastoring. And when I went there, I said, when do you guys close? He said, 12. Three o'clock in the afternoon, we were still in the church. <laughs> Just when he, he's looking at the watch, I start a new song. <laughs> I know the way to his wife's heart. When I sing, Uba will just be confused. And once she's in the spirit, he cannot close the service. <laughs> See how beautiful God can arrange a Sunday for you. Now you can get out with freshness. Not that your pastor is not loaded, but that you got a new injection of life. You are renewed. Because I told him something that next time I come, this place will be too small. And he looked at me and smiled and said, yeah, yeah. But listen, work can make you so busy that you get used to the borders that you are living within. And then God has to bring a flood. The Lord will come himself like a flood. Truly, for the caliber of work that he has done, I know how he has served. This place doesn't represent him. And I carry such grace to bulldoze, to tear down. It's in my metal. It's what I do cheaply. Yesterday we had the event at a big place, Moreletta Kirk. And the place was too full, so we are shifting to another venue. More people registered. It's, it's a tidal wave. And I can't come here and not impact on his work. Even for him, he needs to get freshness. That's why I'm talking about marriage. Because I came here yoked to him, married to him. I was asking him, where is Uba? He said, she's in church. I said, where are the children? I know there are no more children. He said, only Rahila is with us. The boys are in England. I said, I, I've lived in England for two years. They should have known where I was to come and be resting in London and chilling. You know, your uncle is always more exciting than your father. <laughs> in fact, when I see them, I'll be abusing him. Don't mind that, your father. I'm sure he doesn't treat you. You guys come and let's go out and have some ice cream. They will tap themselves and say, you see, this uncle is really... I remember a woman of God came with her daughter. And the daughter was... It was later the mom told me that the daughter said she finds pastors that they are too stiff. So the mother said, no, just come and meet my Baba. You have never met him. He's my pastor, Baba. So they came. So I said, ah, what's your name? And they told me her name. I said, yeah. They said her name was Yah something, something. So I just trimmed it down to Yak. So how are you? How are you doing Yak? What school are you in? And she told her mom, she said, mommy, this pastor is different too. He's calling me Yak. <laughs> then I said, you guys are hungry? The mother said, yes. What do you have, pastor, so we can cook? I was there with my daughter Sally and we can whip up some rice or something so I said no uh, with this fine girl that you brought for me I don't even know how God gave you this kind of girl and you'll be cooking rice for her in the house please come what restaurant do you want to eat do you want to eat Asian you want to eat Indian you want to eat I said there's even an Israeli restaurant down the road she told her mom she said I love this man <laughs> when we got there I asked, I asked her would you like to start with soup and then, ah, she told her mommy, she said, you and daddy are boring. <laughs> and when the mom traveled, every time the mom traveled, she said, just, just go. I will go and stay with Sally and Baba. Then she started, we met in Abuja recently at the airport in Nigeria. And the girl was announcing to the whole lounge. Because we got upstairs and I said, the mother said we should sit on a bench in the general place. I said, no, 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 let's go into the executive lounge. She said, that's why I don't like traveling with you. I prefer to go. <laughs> and when we entered the executive lounge, there was AC. They came and asked us, um, what would you like 
fresh juice and all of that. And she, she announced, she said, I love my Baba. In fact, she said, I would rather die in church. I'm a believer of Jesus. And the mother was like, can you imagine? He's my father. She said, no, he's my Baba. You just got to know him because of me. And they were arguing with the mother in front of the crowd. Who, who first knew him? The girl said, it doesn't matter who first knew I know him more. So children love uncles and grannies and grandpas, grandmas. I knew her parents, you know, and I met them. And I was always eager, eager to meet them and introduce myself when I go to Aero Bones Church. So freshness has come because your uncle has entered. Now, let me show you how people gave offerings in the Bible. It's not true that we should only give offerings when they ask for it. That means we're not committed. But the commitment of a member and his pastor is akin to that between a husband and a wife. Whether your children are grown or not, don't you start saving for them to go to school? Does anybody beg you? One girl stood up in her house. Come. Again. Whenever I pick people, I tell, tell people later. When I use you for an example, God is visiting. I'm not joking. Every man has his own grace. So this girl stood up at home and was worshiping God. Greater than the greatest, higher than the highest. Sweeter than sweetest. Oh, 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 Jesus. She was worshiping him. And then she said, okay, it's time for church. Let me go to church. Then she has already armed her heart with a worship. Because you can't go to his presence. You must come bearing gifts. And from that song, she already found another scripture. I and the children you have given to me were for portents or signs and wonders. Because you have to arm yourself. You don't come to church to receive. You come to church also to give. You must prepare. In fact, church is the place of training. When you are hitting a verse of scripture in your heart and you are hitting a song and you come in and then this witch doctor sitting down on this keyboard, you know they are witches. <laughs> Then he begins to sing the song that is in your heart. You say, oh God, he has confirmed. Do you understand what I'm saying? You get excited because it means you came with the spirit of the witch. <laughs> no, do you understand me? I saw him jumping and I was looking at him. I was thinking, okay, what is this one jumping for? <laughs> then it occurred to me, it's confirmations. In the New Testament, the presence of God should bring you confirmations. But you cannot come empty and they confirm what? Empty space? So when you see him jumping, he's not jumping for what they're doing. He's carrying something from home and the thing collided with what the witch is playing. And then those wizards, those wizards are even harmonizing. <laughs> so he's excited! I'm in the right place. But if you went to a Sangoma and they started, blah, 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 he knows this is a wrong spirit. So you have to bring something from home. And then the girl said, okay, and when it is time for offerings, what am I going to give him? Because an offering is not what you decide at the door of the church. It's a decision from home. That's how faithful people are. They live by faith. The girl looked at her purse. No. Because she's comparing what she's planning with the majesty of the person she's giving it to. Even if you want to bless me like I am like this, there are certain gifts you can't give me. Do you get what I'm saying? Even you too, if you pick up the thing, you say, please go and give mommy this earring. 
you're something inside you will be telling you, you no, know, not this type of hearing. Am I lying? What I'm saying is there are people that you, you meet and you know your offering is unworthy. Because you know you want to make, give an impression that is going to speak for you when you are not there. Because if you give me a good offering, when I call Pastor Eric and I say, where's your wife? And then I talk to her. I say, where's Rahila? And then I talk to her. Then I will ask for you. What's your name? Huh? What? Spell it. S A double N Y. You are calling it Sunny, like a Ghanaian. Sunny. <laughs> Bush, South Africans. <laughs> uh, I will bring you to London, to, to Nigeria. Yes, sir. Nigeria is London. Did you see, you see, see the girls? You have been to Lagos. Which Lagos? You went to Ayedogbon's church. That's not Lagos now. That's, that's, you went to Jungle Bush. I'll bring you to the city. Tell him I said so. <laughs> Hallelujah. But listen to me. So if, if you know that some gifts are not befitting, are you following me? Because if you bless me, I will definitely not forget your name. I say, I'll greet my guys, oh, especially Sunny. Tell her, I say, she doesn't know how to call her name, Sunny, Sunny. <laughs> what is making me remember you? It's your gift. It is speaking for you. Tomorrow, if I get a call and Eric says, ah, some of my people are in the airport in Lagos. They are stranded. There's this, there's that. I don't know how you can help us. Uh, in fact, even one of your people is there. Sunny is there. Even if I'm in Japan, I'll say to him, ah, Sunny, no, 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 no. Wait, let me call. I have a son in the immigration. I have somebody. In Just because of your gift. That's why the Bible says, be careful with your gifts. Now, this girl was going for normal service. They were not launching money for construction or for a new venue. They were comfortable. And then the girl looked around the house. Nothing. And she went to her safe. Now, normal money, where do you keep it? Is it not in your purse? She checked her purse. The money that was there was not the kind she wants to give this one. Who is greater than the greatest? Taller than the tallest? Higher than the highest? Bigger than the biggest? I need admission. He's the one that owns every principal, every university professor, every vice chancellor. He can stare their hearts. Whitwater's Rand can open for you. Any university, Cape Town can open for you. And the school fees will be paid for you. So what is too much to give him? Nothing. And then the girl looked inside the, 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 her safe. And she saw the file where she put all her stock. Her stock in gold, her stock in diamonds. In this case, she had another smaller safe inside that safe. That safe inside was called an alabaster box. The box itself is expensive. Forget about the content too. It was rare. They brought them from China by camels and they brought them across Afghanistan. You don't know how many robberies they escaped brought them down to Turkey, brought them down to Iraq and made it down to Palestine and sold it in Palestine. So the rich buy those bottles. If you have it, it means you have treasure because you must have treasure to put inside. No, do you, do you get what I'm saying? And then she bought the bottle and came home and then poured her precious treasure. That treasure is spirit. It can evaporate so fast. So this bottle is the only thing that can hold it. This is a normal service. Pastor did not say, we are looking for a bigger hall. We want to buy church boss. Uh -uh. It's she and her lover. Because the husband, Jesus, loves her. And she too is what? Submitting, yielding. Is that love relationship? 
she looked at the bottle. He said, this is the only thing that is befitting his majesty in my house. She was closing her assets down. And then she came to Jesus. And yeah, face me now. Now when she met Jesus, I told you the devil is a member of the board. Because you don't have to invite him. So he began following her. They pour a cup full on him. Because you know this oil is, is not eau de parfum. It's eau de parfum intense. So if you pour the cup, one cup full, he will smell that perfume for months. Ah! And the girl said to herself, yeah, and that would be good. Oh. And she said, no, 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 no. I should do better than that. And then sit and said, I just, just pour two cupfuls and take the remaining back. And the girl was thinking, yeah, but that will make sense. Then the devil will now ask you a reasonable question. If you empty two cups of perfume on him, that will be obnoxious now. He will be stinking. Ha! Don't waste it on him. And the girl was saying, what you are saying makes sense. But she was still approaching him. Love for him, her desire to respond to him, to submit to him, was overpowering her mental faculties of thinking and reasoning. And when she got to him, she said to the devil, Oh, you keep disturbing me, trying to spoil my worship. So she lifted the bottle. Now, I told you the bottle is money. The oil itself is money. Then she smashed the bottle. Because discussing with Satan was weakening her resolve to bless God. So she broke the bottle. And began to pack the thing. Pack the thing from the floor. She didn't take a piece of that bottle home. Neither did she take a drop of that oil home. Because we know Middle Easterners build their houses with rugs, Persian rugs. Those rugs soaked up that perfume. That house had that smell, aroma for months, maybe a year. This was just 12 days to the crucifixion. So when Jesus came to the cross, the stench of death around him could not swallow up the aroma. When they put him on the cross, the soldiers took his dress because of how expensive it was, yes. But also the perfume was on it. So they didn't tear it. They cast lots on it. That's why Jesus said to the people, you don't know what you are talking about. This girl prepared my body for death. The death that will pay for all your sins. Wise men brought the incense, yes, when he was a baby. But Mary and Joseph spent the money taking care of him now. So this girl now was the last of the high priests, last of the kings, at the end of his journey that came with the same incense to what? Fumigate him, insulate him, cover him, lavish love upon him. So that even if he was too offended by Chris Delvan because of my, the magnitude of my sins, Looking at this girl who was lavishing love on him would at least make him give the offering joyfully. So he joyfully went to the cross because of what the girl did. She calmed his heart. A cup of water will do a lot to a man. Don't you know? That's how the girl came to church. It was normal service. Thank you. Many of the times, I have been the pioneer of my church. Well, I'm the pioneer, I'm the founder, the president, life president, and everything. Is it like, I'm just about to dash the church to one of my people, because I feel I, it's time to go to new things. But as, as the pioneer in the church, I make every decision. But you know, many times, it is my people that decided the increase 
that came to church. Eric is not going to have 25,000 children from Uber so that they can build a 25,000 seater auditorium. It's the sheep that multiply. So their job is to give you the word. Your job is to multiply. I have a little daughter. I'll give you an analogy. In fact, before I give you that analogy, let me give you, anyway, I'll, let me give you biblical examples. Then I'll give you this analogy and then I'll hand over the microphone. The sons of the prophets, the prophet Elisha built a school and they applied for admission, paid school fees and came for lectures. One day the sons of the prophets took counsel and said, you know, the hostels are too small. The school is too tight. And the things we are getting are very serious matters. So what we are going to do is let's go and cut trees and come and build more cabins with wood. Then they went to Elisha and said to him, Prophet, <clears throat> we were going to leave school, but because we didn't involve you in the meeting, we knew you would be alone. And we don't want to leave you alone on campus. This school is too tight. The way you are blessing us, we want to increase living space. They took the decision for increase. And the prophet said, okay, let me follow you. He didn't tell them how many trees they will cut. He didn't tell them how many more hostels they will build. And it was in cutting those trees that the axe head fell in the water. And that was the message, the last message I heard him preach in Gambia. Yeah. He said, and Elisha threw a stick. And the stick sank and the axe head floated. That was the day. But I have this daughter. She's amazing. Nigeria is divided into states. So she comes from one state that I have no business. I, I like life. I like enjoying. I don't like rural areas. I don't like suffering. Hi. No, 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 please. I don't know. Not even for Christ. Pastor <laughs> Eric is wicked. If you leave him, he'll be the founder of deeper life. You know? You understand? I, I love life. Ay, kai, 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 kai. I like, oh my goodness. Ah. After service like this, I don't want my wife to cook. Let's go to one posh restaurant. Let waiters be running all over the place. I want them to bring the menu and it is in Greek. Moussaka of Alakata. I like to eat things that I don't know. Hey, no, I want the Alhambra and the Al <laughs> I don't want a restaurant that serves Coke. They should ask us, what do you want? A martini of what? A mocktail. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. One day I told them to give my wife a virgin pina colada. She said, what is that? I hope you are not trying to introduce me to drinking. I said, I'm a pastor now. Do I drink alcohol? She said, because she doesn't trust me. <laughs> I don't blame her. The day she told her mother she was going to marry me, the mother cried. The mother said, this is the worst day of my life. <laughs> my daughter said, but you know him now. He lives there down the road. And her brothers told her, he lives down the road. He's now born again. He's even preaching. My mother-in-law asked them, when you went for his crusade, did you hold your own Bible? They said, why? She said, because you have to check your own Bible so that he will not be reading something else. She said a leopard cannot change his spots. But I was really a problem in the neighborhood. So my wife still sometimes, when she looks at me, she thinks, is he really? <laughs> I don't blame her. When I'm preaching, she's always interceding for me. Father, help him, help him, help him, help him. Don't let him go back. 
Then from time to time I'll hear a chorus. I will never, never go back to the world. Never. She's trying to encourage me to continue. <laughs> Some of you are crooks like that. You know me. I, I'm telling your story. So as I'm talking, you're looking at me like, oh, why, why are you exposing us? <laughs> There are some churches, people still go and shark weed and drink. Then they come to church and they manifest spirit. When he's playing this song, Tobe Chuku, it's not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's the spirit that... <laughs> what, what was I telling you before? I was telling you about... Uh, my daughter. So she said to me, I want to go and buy land in my state and build. I need, I need just some assets. So, and I said to her, praise God, because she, she blesses me. Every month, she will send in her tithe, send in offerings, and then send to my account for my daddy. She just, she's a support. I can't pray one line without thinking of her. She's in my heart permanently. So I said, kneel down, let me bless you. And I blessed her. I said, go. The prizes will be good. The people will be favorable to you and everything. And she went and came back. She said, I bought 16 plots. I said, wow, that's really good. I said, you're even richer than me. See, me, your papa, I don't even own land. Then she said, here are the papers. And she gave me the papers. So she, I was just looking at the papers. Do I know anything? Then she said, you didn't look at it very well. So I, I checked it. I said, I, I see my name there. Am I supposed to be a signatory or a witness? She said, no. It's your land. I said, my land for what? She said that when she went to pay for the land, the Lord said to her, what if Pastor Chris would need to use the land for something? I don't come from there. I don't want to go and live on the Drakensburg Mountains. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I like posh life. I like the city. I don't... Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't take me where in the night I'll be here. Uh, uh, uh. Then they'll tell me it's a lion. No. I don't want to think if the lion can enter my house or not. <laughs> if I want to see a lion, let me go to the park. When we're inside the car, we're driving, they say, see the lions there? I say, yeah, yeah. As long as they're outside and I'm in my car and there are rangers around, I'm okay. But don't let a lion come by my window. <laughs> no, I won't pray. <laughs> she said, God said, so I looked at her. Now, I announced we are planting 30 new churches in my state because the Muslims have burnt and destroyed villages. So the Lord told me, every community that has been pillaged, go and plant a living church. So when I said that, she said she felt that I should also go to their state. I've never prayed about it or thought about it or dreamt about it. She brought 16 plots. Then a few weeks later, she came back. I said, Papa, I said, yes. She said, I want to tell you something. I said, yeah. She said, they are selling 170 plots beside the 16 that I bought for you. And the Lord told me, that's your land. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I said to her, wait, 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 wait. If it is witchcraft that you come connected, I bind it in Jesus' name. Every affliction coming from the pits of hell, back to sender. You two own it. She said, no, 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 the conviction is too strong. In fact, she started crying. That before she came to talk to me, she herself was debating, what kind of thing is this? Recently, I began to perceive, Pastor, that God was extending my influence into Nasarawa State. 
have no dream for it, no plan. In fact, my dream was to go back, give one of my young men the church, and then carry my wife. I took her around Europe. We traveled about 12 countries in like 14 days, sleeping in the capitals and in, you know, just having fun. I wanted my wife to tell me where she feels comfortable for us to stay in. Because I'm tired of pastoring. When we got to Zurich, she said to me, I love this place. So I told my daughter there, I said, okay, I think we can pitch the ark here. I told you, I like life, fast trains. <laughs> I like fast trains, first class cabin in a fast train with, they're asking you, what do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? There's champagne, there's all these things. And I'm sitting down swallowing saliva, telling God, Lord, you saved me already. Just help me to pass through this temptation. If it's, a, if it's a temptation, what are you doing in the train? Yeah. I like, you know, sleek little jets. I like hearing people speaking new languages. And I say, which language is that? They say, it's Czech, Czech. I told my wife, we're in Czech Republic. This girl is giving me new territory. A gentleman came to service a few days after Pentecost and approached Peter. They were all sitting down. Peter didn't even know how to run church. Nobody has ever run church before. And then Jesus that gave him the church traveled. <laughs> and Peter was sitting down there. As far as Peter was concerned, this is just Wahala. They were only 120. Then Jesus brought 3,000 people in one day. Now, some foolish African pastors will say that was a breakthrough. He's the God of a breakthrough. I'm telling you the truth. From 120, you're going to explode to 3,000. Sir, 3,000 is not a breakthrough. It's a disaster. <laughs> How many toilets do we have here? So if 200 people enter church now and 15 want to use the toilet at the same time, is that a breakthrough? It's not. You know, all of us pray for miracle, 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 miracle. We love miracles. But let me ask you, if you were the man, come. If you were the man who was lame for 38 years, are you following me? And Jesus heals you. Is that a blessing? Question. You are 38. You have been lame. And then Jesus heals you. And you stand up, you are walking around. Is that a blessing? Yeah, it's a blessing. But how did you used to survive before? People used to give you arms. So tomorrow, why will they give you arms? <laughs> will you now be saying, I, I, I am the lame man who was lying down here before and I was begging you for money, but Jesus has healed me. But of course, you know, I don't have a work. I don't have a career. I didn't learn any trade. I have not learned anything and I need to eat. Will people give you money based on that? Even the girls in town will not be angry because you are a possible competitor with the boy that wants to marry them. No, don't, don't you understand? Because Jesus has healed you. Now you look like a chick. You are looking f fit. Jeremiah may not come to my house again. No, do you understand that? So even what we call a miracle is, is many times an invitation to a new adventure that itself is full of challenges. I need you to shine your eyes. You are walking with Jesus so you will hear wisdom. It is you that brings the increase. A guy walked into church, walk up to pastor and then kneel down and present your phones at his feet. Yeah, drop them at his feet. You know, he, the guy brought, you know, you know what that Jew did? Jews, they don't sell land. They inherited it from God. They will die for it. This Jew went and sold their family land to come and take care of a need that even the pastor has not yet seen. The pastor didn't make altar call for us to raise money to build new toilet facilities. Mm -mm. 
he considered. Uh, hey, Peter is a fisherman. No? He doesn't know what trouble this thing is. 3,000 people got saved in one day and came to church. We are now 3,200 and something. We need money for this, for that, for that, for that. He went and sold ancestral land and came and poured the money at the feet of Peter. He didn't keep a cobble for himself. Sorry, he didn't keep a rand for himself. And stood up. Stand up and go. And Peter, Peter was, no, leave the phones. Peter was looking. <laughs> now listen, Peter was looking at the money. It's the kind of money he has never dreamt of. He's a poor fisherman. Jesus' ministry didn't have any money. The money they had, Judas Iscariot was helping them, stealing it. And he was still thinking, what will I do with this money, Lord? Then the Holy Ghost spoke to him. Change his name. He's no more Sunny. He's Barnabas, son of consolation. Have you ever done something and God gave you a new name? And you know sometimes a name is not just a name, Sunny. A name is actually a reputation, an influence, a level. So just boost your level. That's how churches grew. I came this morning to challenge you. Breathe a new breath of the Spirit into you. And you can take the breath where you are just deep, deeply breathing. The, breathe in now. Breathe in again. You are receiving the Holy Spirit. And then decide to come and be a church member. A church doesn't need two members to stand. Just one. I, Paul, to my true son, Titus, says, when I left you in Crete and the regions round about to set everything in order, I gave you that charge. So one son can take care of a country and all the countries round about. I, Paul, to my son Timothy, when I left Ephesus, I left you there for Ephesus and the regions round about so that you can take care. We don't need 10,000 sons for South Africa. One son. And you can make up your mind tonight and say, Jesus, here I am. You remember the song I sang? If you need a voice to speak for you, here's my voice. If you need a heart where he can hide his word, take my heart. It's your own. If I'm the last man standing, you will still be rejoicing. You can go and rest because I'll fight. David asked, Abner, are there no more men in Israel that you'll allow somebody to get close to my Lord, the king, and steal his water bottle, cut his garment, and take his... I mean, what? Because when David was there, a fly will not come close. Some people say we are not called to worship God. It's true, but it's false. Where does God live? He lives in human hearts. Wherever I've put my name, he says, bring your tithe, bring your offerings. I don't know, Christians are funny. They stop at tithing. I gave 10%. They do it like medicine. They said I should take two tablets in the morning. I've taken it. No, read the Bible. David enlarged the kingdom. He came back and said, I will build God a house. God told the prophet, go back to David and ask him, in all of exist human existence, have I ever asked a man to build me a house? Do I look like someone in need when I created everything? Tell David because he said he will build me a house. I have sworn that he will never lack for a son to sit upon his throne. One day the Jews came to Jesus. I mean a, a, a Gentile came to Jesus and said, I, I have a problem at home. Come and fix it for me. And Jesus was hesitant to follow a Gentile to his house. And the Jews said to him, no, 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 follow him. He built a church for us. <laughs> One man. 
And in church today, we set up committee, subcommittee, uh, extraordinary little committee, abridged committee, just to raise money to buy instruments. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Haven't you got a breakthrough that would make you walk to the mall in Santon and then go to the guitar shop there and then just say to them, I need this five-string bass guitar and that and that and that and that for our church. Then come, let the problem be we don't have people to play it. It's a better problem. No, do you understand what I'm saying? Stop telling yourself you are poor. And the church is even, the pastor is even better than me. The car, see the kind of car they are driving here and his wife. They are just inside air condition. When will you change your level? I've changed the levels of people's lives. There is no pastor I have served that I didn't leave a mark. It's not a lie. I was ready to fly in for a program. It's my daughter. I was already buying my tickets when she said, Daddy, we have made tickets for you. I said, okay. But you don't have to suffer. I told my son, I'm sending you to school, not so that you will come and take care of me and your mother. No. This woman, I married her. This is not your responsibility. I said, till I die, as long as I am alive, you will never have to take care of her. Anything you do for her will just be extra. I'm a man, I told him. And when I met her, she knew that I was a dude. That's why she said yes. I told my children, face your future. Don't be doing anything like you are doing us a favor. Go and face it. Free us to go and live and enjoy ourselves. Let's go to Thailand and get a Sprite inside a coconut with a straw. Then we'll be hearing a language that sounds like spiritual language. <laughs> yeah, so. Then we get out from there and go to Tokyo and then wear kimonos and pretend that we are Japanese and be greeting each other. we'll be greeting the Japanese too like that. You know when you go to Japan, you are a giant. Because they are all short, 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 short people. And you South Africans, especially the girls, they are heavy. <laughs> Yesterday I saw some girls in the concert. I said, Jesus. <laughs> How did you people become so big? We Nigerians, eh? Only a few tribes. Listen. When you come in here, it's a union. You come in union with Christ. In marriage. He has given everything. Set a table before you in the presence of all your enemies and distractions. And he has invited you to rise up, eat and drink. What is the least you can do? Is it not to respond back? So let this be a new season. A season of responses. If any of you understand what I'm saying and the message is for you, lift up your hands and give him thanks. Just bless him in where you are. Ask him, Lord Jesus, help me. I have not thought like this. I have acted less than what you have called me for. Today, I change my approach. You know, Moses took an offering for an ark, for, for them to build an ark for the Lord. And they taxed everybody from every tribe. Five, five, five thousand rand. And then after the tribes gave, Moses said, okay, since the tribes have given, let's calculate what we have got. Then a gentleman stood up and said, excuse me, I'm sorry. And Moses said yes. He said, well, my, my name is Brother Shama. I'm a prince in the house of Judah. I know they taxed us all, five, 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 five thousand, and we paid. But surely Judah is greater than that. I'm not going to allow that to be what will represent us before God. As a prince, I'm bringing gold. I'm bringing silver. I'm bringing diamonds. So that they will know that this is Judah. Then somebody said, hey, hey, I'm from Benjamin. My name is Asa. And another person shouted, hey, 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 we in Issachar will not be undone. Then in each of the tribes, princes rose up. That's how you have to serve God. Don't serve God at the level of everybody. Serve God at your level. I'm a prince. Even if he has not been good to people, tell him, I know you have been good to me. I know. And serve him like that. 
God has sent apostles, not because they are apostles because of office and stature, but because he sent them from another place just to come and light here. So it's like sun. The sun rose and traveled to come and bless you here. So what do you want to do? Let's do it madly. Don't do it calmly. Do it passionately. Violate the normal and enter. Let, let church walk into the supernatural. Violate it. Don't go to school and have your school fees paid and then you act like it's nothing. It is something. Do you know how many people are looking for to go there? You came out of hospital. It's not a small thing. It's a great thing. Magnify the Lord. Ascribe greatness to the Lord our God. Don't come to church and then the pastor is incapacitated. The offerings of church are used. His own personal money. His wife is tired. Pastor's wife get tired. And then you are there gossiping with other people. And thinking, by now, church should be taking care of the welfare of people. How will they take care of the welfare of people? Wake him up from sleep. People should come to church and leave church with a carton of milk in their boots, the trunk of their car, so that life is easy. Do something today so God can remember you for good. Let me tell you, giving is not a gift. You know, one thing for, with Pastor Uba, ah, we all know that she has the gift of giving. No, nobody has the gift of giving. Giving is as a result of saving for a purpose and then when the person gives you he has to kill his purpose and then give to you it's costly so people exercise themselves in giving till they mature it's not the rich that drive church it's a lie it's poor people that change the course some of you are going to give a gift your pastor will change his message because you see a dimension of God that he didn't want to look at before. You can never, by seeing people, predict what they are able to do in your lives. And he's the God of surprises. Revelations introduces him as the prince of the kings of all the earth. So when all the kings of the earth gather, he's the prince. They elect him as their president. And he's with you and me that's why I'm in South Africa it's not because it's convenient by him we will do that which is not convenient some of you are waiting until something happens what about the things that have already happened how many times have you escaped an accident many you didn't even know God diverted it behind you You can say things have been difficult, but you will always add, but God has seen me through. So can't you thank God for seeing you through? Do you notice that we are so thankless? That's why we're not taking over our country. We're not. Not only this country, but all the countries of the world. We're losing. If it wasn't Jesus that was preaching to Iranian Muslims, which one of you would say God is sending me to Iran? Do you want to die? In northern Nigeria, Boko Haram, everywhere. Beheadings, killings. My little choir boy was taken from the choir, from, I mean from his house, kidnapped. And they were asking for 10 million. Someone is living in a shack, one room. You're asking for 10 million to pay for ransom. So churches are empty because every time we have to contribute monies, in the midst of war. So Jesus is appearing to them himself. But surely we can do better than that. Let's plan to take this city. Revival can be planned. A group of friends can sit down and decide we need revival in our city. Change in the prayer attitude. We want to come back to church every day after we return from work and just settle down and pray. It's a decision. Three girls can change the atmosphere of a city in a salon. Guys, don't you think it's time for an explosion of worship? Yeah. 
And so let, let's make sure every Sunday when church closes everywhere, we let's meet at the most popular junction and just stand on the road. How many of you know Phil Driscoll? That man that used to blow the trumpet and has a raspy voice. One day the Lord told him, you think you have mastered ministry. Stop charging people money and stop going for special programs. So now pack your equipment in the afternoon like this. It's like God telling Lionel Peterson, oh, I don't know your big gospel musicians, go and stand at the junction somewhere, you know, and then sing. Can you imagine passing, I will worship the Lord for years. I mean, you are hearing, and say, is that not Lionel? Is that not Lionel? And people are standing afar off, watching him with one keyboard, worshiping God on the street. The Lord said, you are a worshiper. You are not a businessman. Phil Driscoll did that for months. And then God began to meet his needs. So before he was more confident in the charges, he charges people. Now he remembered the God that supplied all his needs according to his riches in glory. What are you waiting for? I heard pastor blessing us this morning. The Lord bless you. Bless those children. Healings. He prophesied bouncing back for all of them. No matter how difficult the challenge is, you bounce back. And then I be, I, he began to bless all of us. I was here collecting my own. Every scripture he said, I went there, I highlighted it. I'll go and check it later. He's already blessed us. He's already said, my children will end well. So shouldn't I turn around and take care of God's work? If my children are not my business, the Bible itself says that strangers will feed your children beside you and your children will be taught of the Lord. Not these stupid systems that are teaching our children that they, are, they may be girls in a boy's dress. The Lord will teach my children whether they are with me or no. Friends, we have enough reason to bless God. Don't just come and enjoy the music. These women are singing. What challenges are they carrying? They too come with bags that need of loading. But they forget their challenges to minister and make it easy for their pastors to minister to us. For God to move. So what are you going to do? Stop waiting. Say, I will stop waiting. I will walk with you, Jesus. Some of you have never been committed to the Lord. That's why you are poor. You lose jobs. You lose girls that you are supposed to marry. Proper girls from proper homes that will change your reputation. Everything you are about to get fails because you are not committed to God. You have never come out and said, Lord, receive my life. I give you that opportunity this morning. If you want the Lord to be your companion in the manner in which you have heard me speak, come, let us pray. Some of you are young. You know the future is bleak. You can't draw two lines and join them because you are so inconsistent, committed to nothing, selfish, childish, youthful, full of yourself. Come, say to him, take my hand. Lead me. If what pastor is saying is true. I used to be a drug addict. My mom, when they even told my father that I was a pastor, he almost fell down laughing. He told them, he said, that boy is a scam, he's a crook. He has cheated me in my house. And he's now scamming all of you in the name of the Lord. And the people were saying, no, he's a great man of God. God used him to heal. He, my father nearly died laughing. That's how bad it was. I used to tremble if I didn't have, I was violent. Because out of frustration, when my body said, I just smash you. When are you going to be committed to anything? I used to be a musician. Nobody ever stopped to listen to my song. I had great songs. Believing in breakthrough. But it will never happen. Until you commit to someone. Then you can learn to commit to other people. Today, 
all over the nations. People hear a song and they say, I've heard that song. I didn't know it was you that sang it. Kings want to entertain you. Princes want to entertain you. Same gift, but a different cloud. If you want to enter the supernatural and walk in the presence of God and have the presence take care of your situations, come. Come. Just come and stand here. I'll pray with you. Pastor, come and help me. No, turn around, face the altar. Just be talking to Jesus. If you are coming, I mean, come. Leave everything you have and come. You don't need any other invitation. This is it. I say, Lord, I'm in business now. There's no more business as usual. They come out. You stand there. I say, Lord, have mercy. I make up my mind tonight. I want to walk with you. I want to know you a little more. The greatest, the highest, the tallest, the biggest. I want to know you. Yes. I've been unknown for too long. I was waiting for it to happen, but now I'm going to make it happen. Say that. Now I'm going to make it happen. I was looking at you since, because the hand of the Lord is upon you. He wants you. He wants to use you. Don't come here and waste the grace of God. See the worship that came today. Full of grace. Powerful. I prayed for God to open a new realm of prophetic ministry for you guys. Amen. Realms of the Spirit. Amen. You can walk in them freely. Because more people are coming. And you need a greater anointing to handle a greater house. Some of you have been sitting down and become discouraged. You are even frustrated thinking something is wrong with church. Nothing is wrong with church. You are just not ready to move. That's why everything is stale. The government shall be upon your shoulders. You should be talking to him. Forget about your watch. Talk to him. Tell him, Lord, where have I been? Thank you. Today was for me. And you brought this gift to bless me. Say it to him. Don't be ashamed. Even if you came out because you just want a new level, then tell God, I am happy with what you have done for me. But I need more. Don't be ashamed. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we have. Where are the young people in the house? Why are you sitting down? You don't, you don't want to make a commitment. You want to be hanging around with funny boys and girls. Being influenced by nonsense. Get up! This is the journey to becoming president of this country. This country needs new rulers. A new mindset. And when Pastor Eric moves from here, who is going to take over the church? It's you. Jesus. So they can go and plant new work in new places. Break your covenants. If you are sitting with the wrong girl, break the covenant. Say, I'm not doing again. And get up and come to Jesus. Let him love you. And you learn to submit to him. It takes courage. But courage pays. That's right. Come out. Just come if you are coming. If you are coming, come. That's right. Come on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness. The precious so we'll, we'll lay hands on you. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. Would you just lay hands on you? Lift up your hands in total surrender. Lift up your hands in total surrender. Lift it up, Ogasa. Lift it up. God, fill you with the Spirit afresh. Give you light. Much zeal with power. Power in the mighty name of Jesus. It's too late in the day. So you need power to run and catch up. But you not only catch up, you'll overtake, recover everything in the mighty name of Jesus. Lay hands on you. Lay hands on you. Charge you with fire. Fire and his presence. Stop doing things normally. Move up. Do things with more passion. You hear me? You hear me? Don't blend. Stand out. I command you to stand out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Take this seal. Don't lose it. Lift up your hands to him. He's your king. He's been looking for you. He's been looking for you. From today, don't lose him. Take the fire of the spirit. Horns of light out of your hand. The hiding place of his power. Prepare for tomorrow. Don't give up. It's not over yet, ma. Get ready for tomorrow. Get ready. Lift up your hands. Lift them to him. That's how you'll come to him. Total surrender. Total surrender. Total surrender. That's right. That's right. Don't be afraid. Not anymore. Don't be afraid. I rebuke fear. It will not end like that. It will be better. Better. Lift up your hand, my son. Submit it to him. Lord, energize you. Quicken you. With his spirit. With fire. With power. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Lift them up to him. Surrender. You will never surrender to another person. Only to Jesus like this. All the days of your life. Lift up your hands, sir. Lift them straight to him. Tell him he's your king. And you have no other. I lay hands on you. I lay hands on you. I know you responded because you heard he will fix your future. Well, I guarantee for you that your future is taken care of. Hang in there with Jesus. You hear me? You hear me? I said, do you hear me? Hang in there with him. Lift up your hands. Bless you. All the days of your life. Enter into a new season of song and dance. Rejoicing in the name of the Lord. Bless him. Don't be ashamed of him. Bless him. Honor him. There's a new day ahead of you. He will honor you. He will honor you. He will honor you. Jesus. Oh, Lord, Lord, hallelujah, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. With the Holy Spirit and with fire. Take it. It's anointed. Lift up your hands. Have I not prayed? Spirit. Lift up your hands, sir. Lift them up to him in total surrender. From today, be his child. Let him be your father. Let him be your caretaker, your provider. In the name of Jesus, I arrest your legs from aimlessness. I command you to stand in the straight and the narrow. Hallelujah. I prayed for you. Have a time. Lift up your hands. Lift them up. That's how you submit to Jesus. You hear me? Don't submit like this to anything or anyone. Only to Jesus. Total surrender. You hear me? He wants to make you great. I'm going to lay hands on you. Fire will fill you. Fire.
fire of the Spirit will guide you every day. He will explain the Word of God to you. When you read it, you will understand it by reason of the Spirit that has come upon you now. From today, in the mighty name of Jesus, that's the Holy Spirit. Take it. Amen. Come on, let's appreciate the word of the Lord, the man of God. Thank you so much. How many people receive? Yes. Father, we thank you. We bless you this morning. We receive your word. We receive the deposit, a deposit, O oh Father, that you brought to this house. Thank you for your servant. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for his life. Thank you, Lord. You sent him here today for, for this reason. And we receive everything that you have released through him. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, we're going to we're going to close the service now, but I'll call Pastor Ryan to come and wrap it up. But uh, those of you that came out and whatever it is you have I know you've responded to the to the word we would like to hear from you just um, later on maybe Irene you can take the, the details so please submit your information to her and then we will make time to meet with you guys and then we'll take it further from there all right Hallelujah.